Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. I'm going to dedicate this project video to my wife. She's always cruising on the web and, and stores for toys for the grandkids and different things. And when she spots one that has the slightest possibility of being made out of wood or wood turned, she highlights it to me. So in this case, what she found was a toy that has that projects a holographic image of a small object that's placed inside two mirrors. In this case the toy is actually th these two mirrors that fit together and then you place an object such as this tree frog inside and then assuming you get him standing in the correct position he is visible up here probably can't see it in that camera but you see him and you can attempt to grab him but he's really not there he's a hologram so this is a fun little toy and uh, thanks to her I need to put it into something that ele elevates it to another level so in effect I'm going to put it in these two wood turned pieces the bottom piece is in effect uh, almost like a bowl but has the has the bottom fitting into it into its own special mortises. The top fits into its mortises and I will put a use a spot of E6000 to secure it there. The object goes in here then it can be viewed and enjoyed. Instead of a frog you can put almost anything else. A more is a spring or other small objects. This bolt is maybe just a trifle too big because it fades fades out as it gets too high. But still it's a fun thing. Uh, she's always on the prowl for fun things like this. So we'd like to know what you take and transform from a common ordinary toy or other object into something that you can proudly display in your living room such as this 3D holographic toy. So this one's dedicated to my wife. And here we go. The wood is walnut I purchased from a gunstock supplier several years ago. He had a pile of rejects for $100. The wood barely fit in my pickup. There's a lot of junk to cut away but it is pretty. I have cut two pieces from the same board, about 8 inches in diameter and almost 3 inches thick. A bit too thick, but better too thick than too thin. I cut it round and made a tenon. The wood is now mounted to a chuck. I have seen a missing knot on one side. I need to flip the wood around to put that area on the inside where it will not be seen. That means cutting another tenon. I am starting to shape the bottom side. After flipping the wood over to present the inside of the bottom, I can begin for real. The hologram toy comes with two mirrored parts. I think I can fit the bottom mirror to this wood. This will take some doing since I have to cut a mortise to fit the tenon. It is nearly always easier the opposite way. I measure the bottom mirror but try to mark it a bit shy. Better to undercut the mortise. I mark an estimate, mark around the surface, then check the measure. To me, this is a much safer process than pressing points to a rotating wood. I am using a box scraper to cut the mortise, then test and repeat until the top fits. Then I can guess at the hollow needed for the remainder. Fortunately, an exact hollow is not required for the bottom. A little loose will be fine. Next, I have mounted the second piece of wood. For this one, I do not need to reverse it. I can proceed the same way as for the bottom, almost. After marking for the mortise, I can do some hollowing. I will need it eventually. Then I decide to drill a hole for the center where the, where the image will appear. Here I cut, undersize the hole and enlarge it later to fit. Then continue on to fit the rim just like the bottom. Cut, test, check. Cut, test, checked again and again. Then also hollow to fit, but try for a tighter fit around the view hole.
Now the mirrors have been fitted, at least for now, the next stage is to fit the top and the bottom together with a mortise and short tenon. So now I have remounted the bottom to the lathe. In the meantime, I filled that missing knot with brass filings and CA glue. I could have left it, but was concerned that it would show up on the exterior. If filled already, that would not be a problem. I clean up the bottom with a large rounded skew as a negative rake scraper. Then make sure it all fits together still. A few adjustments are required as I enlarge the mortise to receive a tenon on the top. Next, mount the wood again. I'm sure glad I marked where the wood was mounted to the jaws between number one and number four jaw. I have again mounted the top on the lathe. The size of the tenon exceeds my dividers and I resort to a tape measure a crude instrument for this work. I proceed to cut a tenon to fit the mortise. On the bottom, I want it slightly loose. No suction fit this time. What luck, it fits. As I think forward to how to finish this project, I decide to cut a mortise inside. I make it larger to avoid the view hole and the thinness I plan for that area. Then shape the exterior of the lid. I want the wall thin, but of course not too much. This section is already a funnel, a planned funnel. My paranoia drives me to test thickness regularly. Now remount the bottom and mount both pieces together to assess the overall shape. After working the diameter and some overall shape, I can remove the lid. I bring the live center up with padding to avoid marring the interior for a touch of security. That should keep the bowl from going airborne while I do some heavy cuts on the bottom side. I am not sure the profile qualifies as an official OG shape, but it works for me. I have remounted the top or lid and thoroughly sanded the interior. Now I apply shellac friction polish and give it a good rub at high speed to dry and buff the surface. Then thoroughly sand the bottom interior just like the lid interior. A break now for lunch.
Now for the risky part. The mounting mortise on the interior is very shallow. I bring up the bottom into an expansion mount and bring up the live center for security. After working the foot section, I finally back off the live center and cut out the center nub. Now thoroughly sand the exterior and apply shellac friction polish. I like the shellac for this type of project since I can blend the shellac between the old and new applications with ease. I am happy the bottom section survived. The top is a bit trickier with that large hole. My cone center barely holds to do the security job. The wood is way too thick around the viewport. I have a lot to remove and that mortise holding the top to the lathe is very shallow. This turning is a bit tense, but I keep the live center for as long as possible. I want the wall around the viewport to be very thin, and if I can, I want a ridge of wood around it for a bit of a handle, if that will work. Then continue shaping the exterior. After enlarging the viewport, I take a short break to flip the lid around on another temporary tenon to refine the inside of the viewport. Then back to forming the ex final exterior shape on the lid section and around the viewport. For the last time, thoroughly sand and apply friction polish. I will not reverse mount this wood again. There you have it, a toy 3D hologram worthy of display in the living room. The toy is elevated to a new level wrapped in beautiful walnut. Many toys, I don't want just to make them. I want to bring them to a new level of function. This one will not occupy a toy box. Instead, it will become an adult toy in the living room what toys do you like to take to a new level? Please give this video a thumbs up subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week, I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. As usual, I appeal for you to wear your full face shield for safety, anytime the lathe is running. I'll see you next week with another wood turning video.